Yeah, okay, um, continuing with the entrepreneurial series, uh, you've started an entrepreneurial endeavor. You've had a good idea, you think the idea will make money if that's your motivation, or you think that the creative process will be absolutely captivating to you. Uh, and you look around and you think, well, maybe this isn't my essence. Get over it. Stop it. Um, get on with your life. Have a little bit of discipline and say, okay, this is what I've chosen to do and this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and, again, my suggestion is that the number one rule in your endeavor is that you have fun. Uh, you have created a game. Uh, Karen from Las Vegas uh, created a game, and she said one of the most soothing things to me, Mick, is that 140 families directly benefit from an idea I had. There is food on the table, Christmas gifts on the table, and she said there's just something that feels really, really good about that. Uh, she was bringing in a new CEO, and uh, we, she asked me if I would interview him, and I did. And he said, you know, he said, quite frankly, that stuff that she gives about the families, and the, he said, I think it's a crock of shit. He said, I don't think she even believes it. And I went, and he said, ah, you know, that it's not what motivates her. And it was a lot of what motivated Karen. This is what uh, a lot of female entrepreneurs are about. They want to grow a business that creates value for a lot of people, including themselves. And you got to look at that, you know, Bill Gates, uh, Sam Walton, Jobs have all created millionaires around them. People who are living a really higher quality of life because of ideas that these people have had and, and move them on. Yeah, as I said in an earlier video, if you're going to have an entrepreneurial endeavor, if you're going to run one, if it's yours, and you're who I'm talking to, it's a dictatorship. Uh, if people don't like how you're running your business, you're going to have to ask them to find some place to work where they appreciate the person who has created the endeavor. Now, the entrepreneur is the creator. They've had a good idea or seen a good idea, and they've acted on the good idea, and they're bringing that good idea to market. If the idea is a money maker, which, why would you do it otherwise? I mean, yes, fun, yes, uh, higher levels of awareness for you, but the bottom line is money is fun, and money is a productive thing, and if you're bringing money in and creating value in other people's lives, then you're the creator. You're the creator of their life. Let's get really big, you know? But <clears throat> if you are not ruthless with your idea and ruthless with your policies and ruthless with your happiness, that's what's going to pervade your company. Uh, so we'll continue with this series. Uh, again, the ruthlessness is something I really, truly want you to work, look at. Uh, we give employees time out if they don't like you know, if they come into work and their energy is down and they're complaining, it's like, okay, take a time out. Go take some time off, do something that you enjoy, uh, because you're not going to sp spend your energy here today because your energy here is not going to enhance my vitality, it's not going to enhance our product, and it's not going to make the product work. So, uh, it takes courage to you know, sit somebody down and say, look, you know, the first time... <laughs> I think I told I went down to Texas. I worked, I drove from Canada to Texas. I had an old Rambler with no air conditioning. I worked for a man named Otis Thomas for nine days. On the ninth day, he said, Paul, that's my real name, you can have tomorrow off. And I said, look, I don't want to take tomorrow off. I said, I like the work and I need the money. And he said, well, you have to take tomorrow off. And I said, why? He said, why to look for a new job? Now, I've used that since. It wasn't quite as funny to me then as it is now. Uh, I fell into a really great space after being asked to leave. Uh, Otis had another associate doctor that he couldn't get rid of and uh, just didn't have room for two. Had bit off a little more than he could chew, but he also believed in the universe. Uh, I believe that he brought me to Texas for a reason, which he did. And I went to work for a man named John Bandy and learned more in a year and a half than I could learn in probably 10 years of private practice. So it all works out. I believe. www.micpeakperformance.com